Hello, everyone. I hope that you had uh, nice biscuits. Uh, now we're back in session. We're going to start with uh, Mayel. Uh, he is a research uh, software engineer at the Imperial College of London, and he'll be telling you about how Julia is a great R&D agent for uh, R&D binding agent. All right. So I'm a, yeah. So I'm a uh, research software developer at Imperial College London, and this is. Um, uh, this means basically I'm a coding monkey for basically any researcher uh, in college. Um, so uh, this is kind of a new, uh, an old new career with a, or de with a definite career path. And Mike uh, Croucher will be talking about it on Friday around 11. So if you're uh, a student who wants to dabble into all sorts of science and research, uh, do attend. If you're a, a corporate suit who's looking to recruit, attend. If you're a PI who's looking for good programmers, uh, and wants to collaborate with, uh, with, with uh, uh, professional programmers in college, do look uh, for that talk. Um, so I've only been at Imperial for about six months, so about a year ago, uh, so I don't have much Julia things to talk about from Imperial, even though there's good, good, uh, good people there doing uh, Julia. Um, so before that, I was a coding monkey in a uh, startup called Crypto Labs. Uh, which is uh, creating a quantum random number generator. Um, and so in that respect, I did use Julia to try and get our product out on the market, and that's what I'm going to talk about. Uh, before I go there, though, there is sort of a, a link between the two. Um, it's that Julia can really be used to, to, make, things, to make things easy. We talk, we've heard a lot about performance. What I really care about um, as a software engineer, as a, uh, uh, as a developer in a startup or at, uh, in, a, in, in college, is about getting things done uh, without any trouble, right? So basically, I guess this audience, if we're looking at, at, at this audience, basically you're uh, early adopters, you like coding, you, you find that entertaining. The vast majority of people who have to code in college really couldn't care less. They don't, want to, they don't want to do it. They just, you know, they're kicking and screaming, but they have to do their data analysis and whatnot. Um, and that's the people that uh, I have to work with as well. So um, that's where Julia is, is really uh, interesting uh, um, as a programming language. It caters to basically everybody. All right, so uh, Crypto Labs. So this is a, a, we're, it's a company that, was trying to, that is trying to bring uh, quantum-based encryption for uh, Internet of Things. So basically make your, uh, your phone, as it was in this case, your phone more secure. So the, um, the way encryption works, it's basically a mathematical problem where if you know the key X, then you can solve this mathematical problem really easily. You can encrypt and decrypt. And if you don't have X, you cannot solve it, or it's really hard to solve. So the question is, what should X be? Well, X should be anything. It should be random, but random in the sense that it should be unpredictable, that you know, people cannot physically guess what that number is, right? So there's a lot of ways of generating random numbers. One of them is pseudo-random, but pseudo-random means algorithm. Algorithm means that there's a de deterministic way to guess this number, in fact, to guess uh, whole streams of random numbers. So that's not really good for uh, security purposes. Because if somebody understands the state or something, something in that random number, pseudo-random number generator, then all the random numbers are no longer quite random. So instead, what we wanted to use is uh, quantum mechanics, because quantum mechanics has randomness at its core, right? It, has, um, uh, it, it comes with randomness built in, with unpredictability uh, built in. Um, so, so, so yeah, so that's the, that's the reason. We're going to look at a specific uh, phenomena. We're going to look at uh, uh, when exactly is a photon uh, emitted from a excited state. So this is what happens in your flash or in a LED. You have a bunch of electrons excited in, uh, in excited states in the LED, and they emit photons every so often. All right? um, and the point is, quantum mechanics says you cannot predict exactly when they would, will be emitted. You know the half-life, you know a lot of stuff, but you cannot say for anyone at any given point in time how many photons will be emitted by the lead. So what we do is we take a phone like this, and we want to secure this phone, and it has everything we need to create random numbers of a quantum origin. It has a flash. 
It has a sensor, the camera, which is actually good enough these days to count billions, uh, to measure billions of photons, but also count, uh, discriminate between 100 and 101 photon if you are in the dark. So it's, they're, they're amazing sensors these days. Um, so we reroute basically the photons from the flash into the camera and we count them. And that gives us a random number. Now it turns out that this random number is, doesn't have that much entropy, right? It doesn't have that much randomness. It doesn't have a full bit of randomness per bit of, uh, of signal. So we have to do what's called, uh, 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 we have to aggregate the entropy so that we get a full bit of, uh, uh, of randomness per bit of uh, signal, or yeah, well, a full bit of randomness. Um, and with that, we can now create uh, keys for encryption. All right, so I'm a bit bad on time. So the point is there's a whole process um, that we need to do to uh, actually calibrate uh, uh, these uh, objects. So, um, so this is what it looks like. We have on the phone, we have something to take a picture, to take pictures. We need a bunch of pictures to calibrate our devices. Um, I want to do this. This bit is, in, uh, is, in, uh, is on the JVM, so unfortunately I have to use Kotlin. Uh, on the local computer, I want to do some data analysis. So this looks basically like most, uh, most um, uh, like a lot of research pipelines. You have some instrument uh, and then some data analysis that you want to do, and you want to be able to pilot all of this, preferably from a simple language like Julia. Um, and then you have this old, in this case, uh, the pictures are in, a, are in a format that uses some C library, so I have also to, inter, to interface with the C library. Um, so that's, that's, that's basically every other uh, research project. So, um, and then this bridge here between the laptop and the phone is a command line. So I have these two things. I have to juggle between command lines and old uh, and, uh, libraries. So, um, so what I did was really simple. It's just using, uh, which doesn't come out very well here, but basically using Julia's built-in features. And this is, this, is, this is trivial, but that's the whole point. I don't have to mess around. This is very easy. This is what I'm looking for. There may be a better API for it, a RESTful interface, or whatnot. I don't care. I want simple. What's better yet is I can actually uh, just really easily add immediately test it. This is, again, it's trivial, but that's the whole point. Getting uh, uh, researchers who don't like code to actually test and make sure their code is correct is extremely hard. Um, so uh, lowering that barrier is really, really uh, important um, uh, for uh, research software engineering. All right. Um, and yeah, so, and again, uh, you guys probably all know this, but basically uh, uh, using uh, uh, interfacing with the old su the supervisor's Fortran code or with uh, Libra in this case is extremely, uh, is, is the simplest I've ever seen between Python or, uh, or R or whatnot. So um, it, it's very easy. And we did create a small library. If you guys are interested in raw format, Images, there is a library. I have not tested it beyond uh, 0 0.5, uh, such as it is. Right, so yeah, so the conclusion is that um, uh, for a lot of people, it's not about performance. Uh, performance is just the crutch. It's the thing we sell to the PI, but what we really want as software engineers is to make sure that the code that is created by, by students is, is, is uh, legible, it's tested, it's reproducible, it's sustainable. And that's really uh, what, what Julia brings to the table. It's the ability to make simple code work. Thank you. All right, we have a time for a few questions. Anyone have any questions for their speaker? Hi, um, thanks for your talk. Could you uh, just explain for a moment a little bit about what it was that you were testing in the example that you yeah, gave? Yeah, sure. Um, so, so there were several things. So there's, actually, do I have a, yeah. 
So basically, this is, what, this is the picture I get. And you can't see much. And that's kind of the point. <laughs> it's a random number, right? So uh, what generally, the illumination uh, of the picture is not quite homogeneous. So you don't get the same kind of signal at the center where the light is in on the, on the corner. So we have to determine how much of that we could use. Um, what's more, we have to make sure that the camera is in a regime where you can actually discriminate between 100 and 101 photons, right? If you have too many, uh, uh, too many photons, you won't be able to count them quite as accurately. Or if you have too few photons, uh, you won't, the sensor won't be able to detect them uh, reliably. So, so we have to make sure we are in the right kind of illumination uh, for a given uh, um, ISO or gain on the sensor. Um, all this while trying to limit uh, uh, to maximize the amount of bits of entropy we can get, so max with higher illuminations, and minimize the amount of compute if, if, if we, all we want is, is, is a, a few bits of randomness. And, and how are you getting that from the instrument? Have you got some API that's a DLL, or is this something you've written in Julia directly to talk so, to the instrument? Or? So, so what Julia, so, so what we had was basically a phone and, a, and some hardware, right? This hardware, basically, which is nothing more than a cap, basically, and, and, and some very simple optics in there. Um, and we want everything to happen in there uh, for, to generate the random number. So everything to generate a random number is actually in Kotlin or on the JVM, because unfortunately, Android is, is married to the JVM. However, the data analysis uh, uh, happened on a, uh, in Julia, because I like that better than Fortran. Um, and because um, uh, the local, I mean, this is fast, but it's not quite fast enough to treat hundreds of images in, uh, uh, easily. Does, does that answer your question? Okay, so it was in post-processing. It was a post-processing to determine working parameters for the, uh, for the hardware. All right, thank you.